那我们接下来这个 session 呢，那我们就请到这个呃 Open Invention Network 的 Shane Cochran， 他今天呢呃要来讲的议题呢是呃 Linux Patents。And open invention network protecting freedom through collaboration and partnership. 那就是说是要讲说今呃 ONI 它主要是啊在保障 Linux kernel 的一些呃权利。那其实 Linux kernel 我们都知道里面有一些专利权的问题。所以说呢呃 ONI 他们主要是希望说能够透过呃他们组织然后来团结呃世界上一些厂商，然后呢在对于那个 Linux 的专利方面也那有一些保护这样子。那详细的呃内容我们就呃交给 Shan c o c h l a n 来这一场演讲。OK， 谢谢。Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well. As、uh, Richard said, my name is Shane Cochlin, and I am a representative of Open Invention Network. I live in Japan, and I work as Open Invention Network's regional director Asia. So my responsibilities include Taiwan, South Korea,、uh, mainland China, Japan, and other Asian countries. Open Invention Network. Has been around for many years already, since 2005, and we are here in the open source community for one reason: to help make sure that patents do not affect the growth and the future of open source technology. Our focus is on the Linux system, and this talk will explain how Open Invention Network. Protects the Linux system by collaborating with the developers and users of Linux-based technology. So, first of all, let's cover the reality of what is happening now, the reality of what we are facing in the Linux world. One reality is that companies have traditionally used copyright. Trademarks and patents to create value. They create it via their products, and they create it indirectly by licensing. That is just a fact of how the technology industry around the world has worked. Another fact is that patent offices around the world have granted software patents as part of this process. Whether you look at For example, the United States or Japan or mainland China, you will find software patents being granted to companies to allow them to protect their innovation or to allow them to monetize to make money from their innovation. That is the situation in which we find open source-based technology. Open source technology is maybe the most important. Way that we can innovate in the post-industrial world. It allows us to create new solutions for all types of technology use in server, mobile, embedded, automotive, space. Everywhere you will find open-source technology. It is uniting every industry, every type of developer, every type of company. So open source. Is huge, and open source exists beside a very large world of copyright, <coughs> trademarks, and patents. We focus on patents, and patents could either help or be a big problem for open source technology. They could enable or challenge open source. The thing that decides if patents are going to enable or challenge open source is the motive of the person or company who owns a patent. We are existing in a technology world that is open and closed. It's not going to be a world where everything is open source technology. It's not going to be a world where everything will be closed. It's a world where open technology and closed technology must coexist. That is a market reality. Open Invention Network is trying to work with people who believe in open innovation, with people whose motive around investing in Linux 
is to make sure that we can all collaborate. We try to use that positive motive as a way to make sure that around Linux, patents are not a threat, that patents enable Linux and do not challenge it. So we have a pretty graphic that explains everything. <laughs> now this is a pyramid that basically explains the, the three concepts that Open Invention Network has. We try to enable, to support the Linux community. We try to defend the Linux community. And we try to influence the Linux community and the larger technology community to make sure that the Linux system is not threatened and challenged by patents, to make sure that the Linux system can grow freely. Let me explain that in a little more detail. So one important thing that we do is we go to every company and project that does Linux and we ask them to make a simple promise that if they find Linux useful, if they have Linux products or they are Linux users or their customers use Linux, make a promise that you will not use patents against the Linux system. Now we have defined the Linux system as basically a list of 1,800 software packages that are needed for almost any use of Linux kernel based technology. These 1,800 software packages are essentially the core operating system technologies that you need for mobile, embedded, server, desktop, and automotive use. We can call it 1,800 software packages that basically anyone doing Linux-based technology, they need most or all of these packages. If they need the packages, we ask them to understand that making a promise not to be aggressive against those packages is a good and necessary step to making sure those packages will be there in the future, that we can all keep working together on Linux. We ask Linux users to promise non-aggression. That's the most important single thing we do. We also go into the general market and we look for patents that could challenge Linux and open source. We buy those patents, we take them out of the market, and we give a free license to everyone who promises not to be aggressive against Linux. Basically, we disarm those patents. We make sure those patents are not available to non-practicing entities, what some people might call trolls. We make sure those patents are safe. We make sure that everyone who promises not to be aggressive on Linux gets an unlimited permanent license. We disarm those patents to make sure Linux is free and safe. That's what we call enabling. It's about, in the background, asking people to promise not to be aggressive. It's about, in the background, trying to make sure that we take dangerous things out of the market so people who aren't involved in Linux have less opportunity to harm Linux. And we try to make sure that technologies like open source patents are licensed to everyone with no charge, just asking for a promise of non-aggression. So in the background, enabling Linux to work without interfering in your programming, without interfering in your business, simply by getting people to work together. Now, defending, this is the exciting part, uh, because sometimes there are companies or organizations that might not be part of Linux, that might not have any interest in supporting the future of Linux, and they might have patents that could affect Linux. How, how do we address that? How does Open Invention Network contribute to the community by addressing that? Well, the short answer, which is just one sentence up there, is that we work to neutralize those threats. What that means in practice is we watch very closely where Linux technology is going. We work to understand who might threaten it. And remember, we have a large deterrent 
against attacking Linux. We have patents. We own patents that can be used to defend Linux. And more importantly, we have a very large community of people who also say that they want Linux to be safe and it's important. That helps deter aggression. That helps prevent aggression even coming into Linux. And from my earlier slide, you might remember I said we buy patents. That also defends Linux. When there's a Linux patent out there in the wild that could be a threat, we go and we take it. And then we give a license to everyone so that no one has to worry about it. Then we have, outside of that kind of broad strategy, that big picture, we have a very interactive way of working with every company and project that wants to help us. It's called Linux Defenders. Now, tomorrow, Armin Hemmel, who's sitting there with the blue cap, everyone stare, <laughs> he's going to talk about Linux Defenders in more detail. So I'm just going to cover it briefly. One of the main things that Linux Defenders does is that it's a place that anyone using Linux can go to if they are threatened. They can go to Linux Defenders, they can contact us, and they can get professional help in terms of people who understand patents, who understand the market, and can help them understand what's going on. So if people are threatened, any project or company, they can go to Linux Defenders and they can ask for help. We also, and this is what Armin will talk about a lot tomorrow, we also do defensive publications. I'm guessing that a lot of people in this room are attached to various free and open source software projects. And a lot of free and open source software projects really do not like patents. We understand that. We understand that. We're trying to deal with the market reality that patents are real and patents threaten Linux. We deal with it by doing things like asking people with patents to promise not to be aggressive. But we also deal with it by thinking with you, how do we prevent patents on the technology you created, that your projects create? That's a defensive publication. When someone creates a great idea but doesn't want a patent and wants to make sure no one else patents it, they can create a defensive publication, a formal record of their idea. We will help with that process. We will help you create that. We will pay for it to be included in official databases and put in front of patent examiners so that patents will not be granted on that technology. It's called a defensive publication. It's part of Linux Defenders. Armine will talk about it tomorrow. It's a very important and very exciting idea. It allows you to record your invention, and we'll support you to do that. Then we do another thing, which is a little bit more lawyer type. Uh, this is to prevent or review bad quality patents in collaboration with, for example, the United States Trademark and Patent Office, or the Japanese Patent Office. These initiatives are called peer-to-patent and post-peer-to-patent. These initiatives are about when patent applications are submitted, reviewing them in more detail to check, is this really a quality patent or is it copying people's ideas? And post-peer-to-patent is about looking at existing bad quality patents, using examples of prior art to make those patents invalid. So uh, basically, Linux Defenders is all about working with the community to make sure that patents are less of a threat to the Linux system. OK, that's enough defense. That's enough kind of what do we do when things go badly. What about the long-term future? What about the long-term future of making sure that policy and law is fair and open to supporting technology like open innovation. In short, what about making sure that everyone has the freedom to innovate? Influencing. That's another thing Open Invention Network does. We go around the world to communicate to Linux companies and projects, to policymakers in government, 
to politicians who make decisions and to media and to say to them, open source is the most important way that we innovate. The Linux system technologies are used absolutely everywhere and to a greater and greater percentage. We want to make sure that everyone has the freedom to innovate in the future. So we want to work with you to help you understand what type of approaches are fair to open source. What type of rules, what type of trade agreements, what type of thinking allows open source to be competitive around the world? And to make sure that patents don't challenge open source, that where patents exist, they enable it. So that's how we influence people. We talk to them and we talk to them and we talk to them and we talk to them for many years. For example, I have been talking in Taiwan for four or five years. Tai I guess Florence knows. Many years. I keep annoying her. I'm always back here. I'm always at Academy Sinica. I keep talking. And I won't stop until all of you have pledged non-aggression on the Linux system. Everyone in this room, I'm going to keep coming back. Because we believe that we need to have this happen. Okay, so we don't just talk with people, we do work with people as well. Uh, the kind of looking after the Linux system, that idea, looking after the Linux system, that has got several organizations who work globally to do different things. I told you Open Invention Network is all about the patents. That doesn't mean that other things are left. For example, Linux Foundation helps coordinate global development activity. I believe Munakata-san has already spoken today about the, the long-term kernel initiative, talking about many companies working together globally to reduce development cost on Linux. That type of thing is what Linux Foundation does, and they do it brilliantly. Software Freedom Law Center, they help with legal counsel. They help with legal support to projects. They do it for free, and they do that everywhere. Then you have companies, projects. You've got all types of different Linux stakeholders. That we talk with them. We work with them to understand. We, we call it trends. Basically, we work with them to understand where is Linux going next. We talk about cloud computing. We talk about virtualizations. We talk about the future of the server of tablets, of mobile, of desktop. And we try to work with them to protect Linux even before Linux arrives in a new area. This is where we use a lot of management speak. There's basically uh, three things that all that translates into. Industry roadmap. That means we try to have a big picture understanding of the entire Linux system and the industry around it. And from that big picture, we try to make sure we protect it. We have partner roadmaps that we follow. In other words, with people who have pledged Linux non-aggression, especially very powerful innovators who are pushing forward technology in areas like web services or cloud or virtualization or just normal servers. People pushing forward, we try to understand exactly where they're pushing to so that we can protect Linux. And we support what we call advanced inventing. Advanced inventing means that because we talk with everyone, because we have contacts around the world, we try to be there before the rest of the market gets there. We try to help make sure that there are defensive publications in place, that if people are patenting, they promise non-aggression on Linux, so that the by the time everyone else arrives, that new area is very safe. That means it's important to talk with projects. It means it's important to talk with companies. It means it's even important to talk with, for example, foundations. A quick example I'd like to bring up would be XORG Foundation that just joined the OIN community, I think it was last week, to know what they're doing next with XORG and where it's going and how. We're going to work very closely with them on that. We're going to work very closely with them on other things, like, for instance, prior art around graphical windowing systems, so that we can make sure that bad patents don't happen or are stopped around those areas. 
Yeah, let's, let's, let's pull back a bit and go to the what you really need to know. What you really need to know is that Open Invention Network works to protect Linux. We were founded many years ago by six of the very large companies investing in Linux. That's Red Hat, IBM, Sony, NEC, Philips, and Novell. What we do is we ask projects and companies to join a community that promises they won't use patents aggressively against Linux. A simple, simple promise. We're asking everyone who uses the Linux system technology, everyone who has Linux-based products, Linux in their services, Linux in the cloud, everyone who uses Linux anywhere, we're asking them to make a promise of non-aggression. We do not care if they have a patent or not. We just want them to make a promise that if they had a patent, they would not use it aggressively against the Linux system. From that basis, from that agreement, from that community, we work to prevent external threats to Linux. And we can collaborate to make sure that the Linux system is not challenged by patents by doing this. It's free, it's simple, it's easy. Every project and every company using Linux should consider doing this. In fact, they should just do it. We want you to just do it. <laughs> we want you to be part of this to protect the future of Linux, to work with us to make sure that patents do not become a large threat to Linux, to make sure that we collaborate to ensure that everyone has the freedom to innovate and Linux is always available to any individual, any project, any company, big or small, any part of the world, no restrictions. If we work together, we can reduce patent aggression and we can keep it as a small issue, not something in the center of Linux. It's an important concept. It sounds a little boring if you just want to do development, but it's a simple promise. If I had a patent, I would not use it aggressively against the Linux system. Simple idea, we want you to be part of it. Okay, I have a couple of minutes left. If you have any questions, I'm very glad to take them. I believe there's a question at the back. Uh, I got more than one question. <laughs> so, first of all, why only 1,800 packages? Uh, why let's not say uh, all the packages we have in Debian, for example, or why even limiting on few packages? Why not say all software released as open source? That's one thing. Then uh, isn't this a, a the patent war, a money war, considering that the money is spent in justice? And if so, isn't this battle already lost against giants like Microsoft, Google? Uh, Oracle, etc. And then, isn't this also a war which is mainly US and Japan based? And like we have no software patent in Europe, for example. So I see that a fight that I I see mainly in USA. So if I don't care about the US market, why should I care? And uh, finally, shouldn't we f just fight the patents themselves rather than playing the games of the big big companies? Good questions. Now, there were quite a few, so if I forget one, just bring it so back. So, do you want me to go one by one? No, no. Wait, <laughs> let's start. Okay, first I'm going to start with the uh, why do I care one about if patents are restricted to US and Japan, why should I care? Uh, just, just as context for the general thing. The situation on software patents is pretty much global, actually. So, in some areas, like the European Union, we do not see formal software patents as an accepted part of the normal uh, patent market. But the European Patent Office does issue patents on, quotation mark, software implemented innovations, end quotation mark. That's a software patent in effect. So we have a situation where we have very clear software patents existing in the United States and Japan and China as three large market examples. 
But in other markets like the European Union, the EPO is granting what is equivalent to software patents in effect. Uh, if you want to read more about that, just for reference, if you look at Free Software Foundation Europe's website and check their software patents page, they have details about the European situation. So that's a, a good guideline I, for that. I believe we have different situations depending on which country in Europe, so it's maybe even more complicated, right? Am I right on that point? Uh, you've got different situations in terms of the legal systems, but not different situations in terms of the EPO granted patents. So it, it's, let's put it this way. It's not, it's not a clear-cut situation of software patents are formally recognized in Europe and all of the EU countries. It is a clear-cut situation that we're seeing software implemented innovations being granted by the EPO and EPO granted patents are technically valid across Europe. So in other words, we're looking at the potential for court cases and litigation. So it, it's something we have to address. Basically, software patents or software patents, in effect, are global. It's something we have to worry about. It's something we have to address. Okay, so we're addressing it. How do we do it? Moving quickly, second question, uh, going back to your very first. Packages, how do we decide? Why is it limited? Why don't we cover all open source? Okay, when you're granting a patent license, you need to have a grant that's relatively specific. When you're asking hundreds of companies and projects and foundations to grant, you need to be fairly clear about what you're doing. And you also need to find common ground. What we have done is we have created a list of core technologies that we ask people to grant on. It's not all open source, because that doesn't have a definition beyond it could be anything with an open source license. It's defined. These packages, these software technologies, you're promising you would never use a patent aggressively against. Getting that type of agreement in place and that kind of momentum is doable. A broad grant saying all open source, that would be much less feasible with hundreds of stakeholders. But, and this is something I would love to stress because something exciting is happening. Just this March, we covered 1,100 packages, not 1,800. We just expanded what we call the Linux system by 740 packages. So the Linux system that we are asking people to pledge non-aggression is not static. It grows. So we are adding new packages to it. We started the process this year with large growth of over 700 packages and we will continue the process annually from now on. So yes, it's not a complete blanket situation for covering everything that you could conceivably have in a Linux-based operating system, but it covers a considerable amount of core technology and we are taking steps to expand the coverage, especially in new areas where you, we see Linux growing. Uh, for example, mobile technology is a big focus, embedded is a big focus. So I hope that answers that one. Uh, what was the other stuff? The last one is, why shouldn't we fight the patent system ah, yes. instead of doing playing on the same game? Sure. Uh, right. Because we need to multitask. Because if we simply decided to go for the long game of, let's say, dealing with the reason that software patents are a challenge, we're not solving the immediate threats posed in the market. Open Invention Network is doing both. It's dealing with the immediate threats because someone has to, whether you uh, like software patents, whether you're a company with a lot of them, or you really dislike software patents and you ideologically oppose their very existence, it doesn't matter. At the moment, software patents are real and they're a challenge. Someone has to stand up there and try to stop them being a threat to Linux or at least reduce the threat. At the same time as that, we have to take measures to record innovations that people don't want to patent, like defensive publications, to prevent patents being granted on someone else's idea. At the same time as that, we have to go to policymakers, we have to go to politicians, we have to talk with the media on the longer game of making sure that everyone has the freedom to innovate. So we're, we're looking at 
multitasking. It's not as simple as A or B. We have to address the current reality and we have to aim for the future simultaneously. A lot of my talk is about the current reality, the challenge, the immediate threats. But the influencing slide, I think, illustrated that we're talking to everyone and we're trying to deal with the long game. And we're doing that in collaboration with the community entities I've referenced earlier. Entities like, for example, Linux Foundation and Software Freedom Law Center. But changing the patent system, that's decades of work, quite frankly. It's a global challenge. So while we're doing that, we also have to deal with the threat. Okay, my time's up. The lady's getting agitated. I have okay. to stop. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for Thank the you, excellent Shen. questions. Thank you.